Right, okay folks, welcome to uh, yet another Main Meister video. Um, today I'm going to be taking a look at uh, not 10, but 9 horizontal shmups for the C64. Um, some of them are absolutely amazing, some of them not quite so good. But anyway, let's kick things off. Now this is Delta. This was uh, released by Thalamus Software. It did get good reviews at the time, and Zap if I recall. Um, I mean, I had the wonderfully mixy load, um, which basically it was a little mixer thing that you could play about with when the, the game itself was loading. Now this was the, the second game, or maybe the third game, I can't remember exactly, from a, a Finnish programmer called Stavros Fasuli. Probably got that pronunciation wrong, but uh, yeah, Del, excuse me, Del looked and sounded really, really good. It sounded amazing. Now I did buy it back in the day, and if I'm being honest, it never, it wasn't a game that I really enjoyed, and I didn't really play it all that much. Um, I've probably played it more through emulation than I did when I had uh, my C64. Now the reason. That I didn't really play it was because it was just so difficult. Now it's very much uh, a sort of memory shmup. Like a lot of shmups to be fair, a lot of like arcade shmups, even stuff like R type and what have you, it's all memory. It's the same patterns over and over again. This one was pretty damn tough. But uh, yeah, it, it just looked and sounds amazing. It's, it's absolutely one of the, the probably most technically proficient, um, not just shmups, but technically proficient games you're going to see when you see 64. Holy shit, yeah. I can definitely get further in this game now than I could back in whenever it was, 1985. So unless you knew these things were coming, you didn't stand a chance. There we go. So yeah, that's uh, that's Della. Right, sticking with Thalamus. This is Armalite. Now this game is heavily influenced uh, by our type, which you'll soon see. This has got graphics which don't look. They look out of place when I see 64, and I mean that as a, a compliment. The graphics, look at them. They do look incredible. Really, really do. This could absolutely be in an arcade cabinet. That was the thing about uh, Thalamus games. They all had incredible graphics, great sound, brilliant graphics. Some of them were just a bit too difficult, but yeah, as far as looking and sounding nice, they were always absolutely top drawer. Now I think uh, if you've got any pals, um, you can get them to play along with you, so you can have simultaneous two-player action, which would certainly make it a wee bit easier. You do start off with that little uh, sort of pod, pod thing, that little kind of gun placement which kind of follows you about. Um, which kind of does make the game slightly easier, but yeah, look at the graphics. Really, really impressive. Even now, I do criticise a lot of 8 bit games saying that they haven't stood up well, but this game absolutely has. It still looks absolutely staggering. The sad thing was, I've never actually had this game back in the day. I think I'd moved on um, to probably the Atari ST by this point. But yeah, if you want a, an R-type fix, then uh, look no further than the uh, Armalite. Right, sticking with uh, Thalamus. Uh, this is Stavros Fasuli's very, very first game for the C64. This is Sanction. Now, this game has got absolutely staggeringly good music. The loading, uh, <laughs> the loader for this game by Rob Hubbard is one of my favourite Sid tunes. I mean, it's uh, it's instantly familiar. Just an absolutely staggering game, and the sound in this as well. Like the sound of the game, the, the engines is this epic. Now you've noticed I've not said a lot about the gameplay. It's big, and that's probably because I'm not a fan of this game. 
it kind of looked alright, but I don't know why they chose to have the kind of overhead view at the top. I don't really know what that's adding. I mean, sort of from a technical point of view, it looks quite fancy, but do you really need it? What it does is it kind of shortens or it makes the actual play area kind of smaller. You could quite easily have made it full screen and uh, yeah, just left it kind of to the side. Because the thing is, the graphics in this game, whilst they look alright, the, the sprites, the main kind of ship sprites, are far too big. There's very, very little room for manoeuvre. Yeah, look at them, they just, they're, they're way too big for the screen. And it's fiendish, absolutely fiendishly difficult, this one. But seeing that, I do still play it. Um, it, it looks beautiful, you know, it does. And that's the thing about games, games that are stupidly difficult, if they look amazing, then you're more likely to want to keep playing it. I don't know what that little thing that shoots across the screen from left to right is, I don't quite know what that's meant to be. So yeah, there you go, that is Sanction. Right, this next one needs absolutely no introduction. Now, if you're a regular to my channel, you'll know I'm not a fan of this game. Yeah, this is Euridium uh, by Andrew Braybrook. This is probably, probably the most technically pretty impressive game. Not just shmup, technically impressive game. I mean, uh, this would absolutely look, it wouldn't look out of place in an arcade cabinet. I mean, it's got the graphics. He kind of perfect, kind of was the first kind of game to, uh, or the first guy to incorporate like bas relief graphics. We didn't really know what these were until Andrew Braidwood came up. Sorry, Andrew, I can't even speak. Andrew Braidwood came along. Um, the graphics in this game are phenomenal. The sound is to die for. The scrolling is just epic. But I don't like the game, and the reason is because. If, I, if you thought thought that uh, like Delta was a memory game, this game is even more so. And you've got these annoying uh, sort of pillars which you can crash into. And if you're zooming along at 100 miles an hour, there's absolutely no way you're going to miss them. There you go. Now you can see there it has got a shadow, but yeah, you need to play this game over and over and over again to start getting good. Um, and that's why. I don't like this game, it's just way too difficult. If they'd taken out these little uh, barriers that you can crash into, I think that would have made the game easier and a lot more playable, and I think it would have been a better game for that reason. Um, now, I'm playing the, uh, there was a, a second version, a slightly enhanced version that came out, and what that's done is, uh, instead of having to wait a certain amount of time before you can land your uh, your spaceship. The enhanced one, or the, the, the one that kind of came out later on, once you got to the end of the Dreadnought ship, it would automatically land, so it does make it easier. I mean, look at that, that is awesome. When you look at it, all it's doing is kind of scrolling the screen and it's kind of dissolving it, but it gives a really, really impressive kind of uh, impression of the ship can you melt? But yeah, I, I know I'm completely, uh, you know, I'm in the minority not like uh, not liking this game. Because, you know, I would never ever doubt that it's one of the most impressive games, but it's just too damn difficult for my liking. <laughs> Perhaps if I played it more, I would get better at it. In fact, that's an absolute given, but... Uh, yeah, it absolutely deserves its place in this list. So that is the mighty Euridium by Andrew Braybrook. Right, this next one, um, Salamander. It's a conversion of the Konami uh, shmup. Now you'll see there, uh, graphics, Bob Stevenson. Bob Stevenson, um, 
he was probably, him and a guy called Hugh Riley, um, they were probably two of the best artists on the C64. Um, they used to do a lot of like loading screens and they used to do a lot of like artwork which you could kind of download from Compunet back in the day. Um, and yeah, this... I'm not really a fan of this game and I'll tell you why right away. I don't like shoot 'em ups that let you build up your firepower really, really fast. Dude, this one is ridiculous. You can have like lasers and multiple options. You can see like, these little circles are called options, by the way. Um, you can really amass some wicked firepower within a very, very short space of time. I don't like that. I'm old school. I like to have to earn firepower or fire ups, eh, not fire ups, eh, power ups and that kind of stuff. But saying that, this is a very, very accurate uh, conversion of the arcade. I'm not quite sure how many levels it's got. I do remember buying this. I think I bought this on budget and it is a multi-load. Yeah, look at that. I mean, that is impressive. It really is. Now, I know uh, my mate Lukoser, he's a massive, massive fan of this game. Um, oddly, Lukoser hates R-Type. I love R-Type, but don't like this. <laughs> so go figure. But yeah, look at it. This is... It's impressive. It really, really is. When you think of, uh, we're talking about a, a 64K computer, and it's it's putting out something like this. I mean, the graphics are phenomenal, the speed, everything about it. Like I said, I don't know if it has all the, the levels, but then that's you know, yeah, that that would be it would lose a few points for that. But uh, as far as horizontal shoot 'em ups go, this is absolutely up there. It's one of the best. It really is. I'm sure somebody actually mentioned yet that it doesn't have all the levels and because of that it's quite a short game. Um, now I've, I very very rarely play this and you can see sort of how well I'm doing so I think, I think you would probably, um, you'd probably be, it'd be quite a short lived game. But as far as what it does, it's awesome, it really is. So anyway, that's Salamander. Right, this next bad boy, Slayer. Now this, uh, I believe this is unique from any other game that you've seen so far. And so far as this was a budget game, now I did buy this on a uh, budget label. It came out, it wasn't like a, a new game that came out for full price, then it came down to budget price. No, this actually got released as a budget title and look at it. I mean, look at the graphics, look at the scrolling. It is bastard hard. It's probably, I think it's probably the most difficult shmup that you're going to see tonight. Or today, depending on what time of the day you're watching this video. It might be the middle of the night, I have no idea. But this, this has got to be up there with one of the best, uh, not just budget shmups, one of the best uh, budget titles. It really is. Look at the graphics. You know, when you think uh, when you think of like Bionic Granny or BMX Racer, and then you look at this, absolutely insane. But yeah, it's bastard hard. It really is. So if you want a challenge, then uh, yeah, go and grab this. I'm sure. Now I'm not 100% sure, but I'm sure. Um, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that this game was programmed by guys that kind of did hacking on the C64, did demos and what have you. Something niggles me. But this is just... Stupidly beautiful, it really is, and you know, it's, it's this would absolutely have 
sold as a full price game. It's just a pity there's no kind of data on the internet as to, you know, how many like units games sold, but I mean it was not something that was recorded back in the day, well at least I don't think so. So yeah, there you go, that is the Mighty Slayer. Right, next one, R-Type. Now, I do love a bit of R-Type. This was, uh, well it certainly wasn't one of the original uh, horizontal, horizontal shoot 'em ups but uh, it was certainly one of the first Probably like the, the first horizontal shoot 'em up to have incredible graphics. I remember seeing this in the arcade in Bathgate, um, and I just it was a different level, completely different level. Now the thing about R Type, it should, in theory, challenge computers because of the graphics, but weirdly, almost every version of this game, um, even on home computers, was actually bloody good. You know, look at. Look at the amount of detail that's going on here. Movement, there's no slowdown at all. You can the sort of background fading in, that's really, really nice. In the arcade, that would that sort of thing would be kind of going on in circles, so there's slight compromises. But yeah, for your fix on our type on a C64, this is going to that's absolutely going to uh, scratch it, scratch your uh, desire to play 64 R type. There you go. Right, the last two games are games that are more modern, um, i.e. have come out in the last uh, few years. I'm not sure when this game came out, is it going to tell us? This is Metal Dust. Hopefully it's going to tell us. Maybe not. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. All you need to know is it came out in the last probably three, four years, something like that. Now, I've never ever played this game before until now. Yeah, I mean, there's even speech in the damn thing. <laughs> This is impressive. I'm not a huge fan of really richly detailed backgrounds because I find it just distracts from uh, the kind of the game itself, and this is no exception. But this is a really, really beautiful looking game. I mean, listen to the sound for God's sake. This, I mean, if it had slightly sharper graphics, this game would not look out of place on like a, a Sega Mega Drive or something. Look at the speed of the thing. Who the hell? Whoa! Is it me or does that thing on the right look like a rabbit? Ah, right, you need to avoid that, there we go. Now what? Yeah, 
Yeah, it's just hard as nails, but then you don't want games to be too easy. You want your money off of it, you need to get down there and hide. Technically, it's impressive. I absolutely love seeing new games. I love seeing just what people can make these old systems do. It's incredible. <laughs> right, anyway, yeah, listen, that is awesome. That is Metal Dust. Let's take a look at the very last one. Now, in my opinion, I've left the best to last. This is Soul Force, released uh, by, I think it's Protovision. And uh, it was programmed by Sarah Jane Avery. See there, it came out in 2020. Now, this game, I bought this, I think it was about 8 quid. But uh, trust me, it's worth every penny. I don't know why I tried to load that, I didn't mean to do that. You know, even look at look at the presentation here. This is something that you would never expect on a, a home computer game. It was something you got on a maybe an Amiga game or a, a Sega Mega Drive or something. Not on an 8-bit machine. Even little touches like that, the score going up the screen. The attention to detail is just phenomenal. This video is absolutely, it doesn't include every single horizontal shoot 'em up. There's others that I've obviously missed. I was just kind of, uh, I was just trying to go from memory. Um, you need to remember, I moved away from the C64 in um, 1987. So there was probably a lot of games that came out after I had left the system, um, which, you know, I don't have any memory of it all, so I wouldn't have included in this, but uh, yeah, this is just, it's its nine shoot 'em ups for different reasons are absolutely worthy of your attention. Some are better than others, uh, and I have to say, in my opinion, I think Soul Force is probably the best horizontal shoot 'em up that uh, exists at the moment for the Commodore 64. Just, you just would not have expected to see a game of this quality when a Commodore 64.
I, for one, can't wait to see uh, what Sierra's going to do next on the C64. Yeah, there you go. So that is it folks, that is 9 horizontal shmups for the C64 that are worthy of your attention. Like I said, there's plenty more you can check out. But as always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thank you very much for watching.